The recent Stack Overflow annual survey shows that over 25% of all respondents have some experience with the Python package Pandas, and that's more than 50% of all Python users. With the recent popularity of alternatives like Polars, some have been pondering if Pandas will be around for the long haul. But in this video, we're gonna talk about the brand new Pandas 2.0. Pandas is so widely used that most of the updates to the package are done in the background and you don't really notice them when they roll out. And actually it's pretty much the same for Pandas 2.0, but there is one big change that I foresee being highly adopted in future versions of Pandas, and it's the new Apache Arrow backend. In a recent article by one of the core developers, he goes into detail about why this change is such a big deal. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how this integration into Pandas 2.0 will make the library simpler, faster, work better with related libraries, and overall help the library move into the future. Okay, so I'm here in a Jupyter Lab environment. If you want to learn more about Jupyter, I have a whole video on it. At the time of filming this video, Pandas 2.0 is still in pre-release, but you can install the pre-release version using this pip install command. And be sure to check out the release documents for Pandas 2.0 for full details on everything that's changed in this version. Let's load the important libraries, import pandas. I've also installed polars and let's print out the version so you know which ones I'm using. And there you can see I've installed the Pandas 2.0 release candidate zero. So let's read in a CSV file as a data frame. When you're reading in this file, now Pandas is storing that data in your computer's memory. And historically, Pandas has used NumPy as the backend for storing most of its data types. So I'll run a head command so you can see the data in this data frame. And if I run df.info, you can see that each of these columns is stored as its own unique data type. The numeric values are stored as int64, and the string values are stored as objects. Now, if we focus in on one of these columns that has numeric values, we can actually do a dot values on just that column. If I run a type on this column, you can see that it is indeed a NumPy array. Similarly, if I just create a panda series from some data, I see that it's automatically converted into an int64. Or if I create a series with some strings, it will store these as an object data type. So by default, nothing's really changed, but with Pandas 2.0, we have some more options. By explicitly stating that we want Pandas to use the pi arrow data type, we can see that the series has an int64 with the pi arrow backend. Similarly, this series of strings is now a data type string instead of a general Python object. If we want to, we can tell Pandas to use arrow by default, and we do this by setting the option mode D type backend as pi arrow. Now let's go back and read that same CSV as before using the pi arrow backend. So I'm going to call this df arrow. We're also going to set nullable d types as true. Now when I run dot info on this data frame, we can see the data types are using pi arrow by default when it reads in this CSV. So I know what you're thinking. Okay, Rob, you can use pi arrow backend, but why use arrow? Let's talk about some of the advantages. One reason is its ability to handle missing values. Remember this panda series from before where we have a bunch of integers? What if one of these values happens to be a none type? Now, historically, these data types would then automatically be converted into float types. I'm not gonna go into all the detail as to why, but just know that this is not ideal in all cases. But let's see what happens if we use the pi arrow D type. Now we can keep the data type as an int 64 and it can handle the fact that there are null values. This might not seem like a big deal in itself, but it's important to remember that this is actually using Apache Arrow's implementation of dealing with missing values. So the fact that Pandas can use this natively can make things a lot more efficient. The next reason why we would want to use pi arrow backend is because of speed. Now this will depend on what machine that you're running it on, but let's just do a few different tests to see the speed difference on my machine between a few operations on the data sets we have. So we can take this count column and run a mean on it. And using time it, we can see how long this takes on average. And let's compare that to the pi arrow backend. 
So with a simple operation on a small data set, we're already seeing a slight improvement in speed. Let's compare the speed of just reading in the file itself. Now using PyArrow backend with the use nullable D types. And there we see a pretty significant speed up in the load time. So I ran this a few times, but you can see that loading it with arrow takes about 5% of the time as it would with the old NumPy backend. And the same goes for string operations because PyArrow has its specific string data type. Let's compare the time it takes to see which names in this data set start with the letter A. And now with the PyArrow backend. So in this case, it's about 30 times faster using PyArrow. And the next reason is interoperability. And that's just basically that Arrow is used as a backend for more than just pandas. R, Spark, and Polars all can use Arrow backend in some way. A good analogy to this is how CSV file formats, when saved to your hard drive, can be used by many applications. Pandas, Excel, R, and that format is independent of the programs that use it. Now here we're talking about data that's stored in memory, so it's a little bit different than the file extension of CSV, but it's similar in the way that many other programs like R, Spark, and Polars use the Apache Arrow backend, and this makes transferring of data in memory between those programs a lot more efficient. So let's show an example. Remember how I imported Polars before? I know that Polars is pretty good for building big data pipelines, but let's say I've read in some data into memory using pandas, for instance, using read SQL. I have this data frame and I wanna run some polars operations on it, but then I wanna convert it back into pandas so that I can plot the data. The nice thing about using the arrow backend is we can transfer that data in memory between the two packages and do it efficiently. We've loaded in this arrow pandas data frame and we can use polars from pandas to read this in as a polars data frame. Now we can do the data intensive work like some group by aggregations using polars. And we can take this aggregated data frame and convert it back into pandas so that we can leverage pandas built in plotting methods. Now in this example, it might've been easier just to do everything in pandas, but when you're working with large data sets, the fact that you can move them back and forth with very little overhead is a huge deal. And the last reason I wanna cover about why the arrow backend is so important is arrow data types. As Mark writes in his article about this, Apache Arrow allows for some better data types than what you can find just using NumPy. We could show just a simple example of this. The Boolean data type in NumPy actually uses eight bits to store this Boolean value. Pi Arrow, however, only uses a single bit, which is much more efficient. Not only can we see here that this uses less memory, but as we discussed before, the Pi Arrow version allows for null values. If we tried to do this with the NumPy backend, it would convert our data type to a default Python object. In his article, Mark shows how you can set custom data types like this, where you have a list with strings within it. Unfortunately, these don't render well in a Jupyter Notebook environment, but I can also show you that this date type column is actually a date 32. And these have similar built-in methods to what we normally would use with date time, where we can do things like day of year or day of week. And it's with custom data types like this that are built into Arrow that I think Pandas 2.0 is really gonna push us towards using more and it will make our data processing much more efficient and standardized. Thanks for watching this video on Pandas 2.0. Like, subscribe, hit the bell button, follow me on all the different socials. You can check out a link to everything that I discussed here in the description. And like always, give me your feedback in the comments below. See you next time.